Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I just want to take a look at the late game decision making of Team Secret. Just today they took down Team Liquid who is actually 3-1 in Div 1 of EU. That's very impressive, right? Secret obviously being a very formidable team, uh, name brand themselves, it's not surprising that they have the potential to do this. But in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can be more reliable in, in the late game. What are the decisions that you're not making that is causing you to lose games that seem like sure wins or uh, you know, even if it's an even game, what is the play you're supposed to make? What are you supposed to do in a Dota game the longer it goes from around this 20 to 30 to 35 minute mark? That's what we're going to focus on here today. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below, I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. So the first clip I want to look at is a clear disengage from Crystalis in the top side of the map. And the main thing here is one I'm very, very passionate about. Because your average player, especially, <laughs> this will happen a lot um, when I'm talking to people in like the game like Discord or just Twitch chat. People will be like, oh, my, my team is just never with me. We can never push. Guys, in pubs, if you're trying to gain MMR, you have to play around what's happening, okay? You can't, you can't think about the optimal all the time, even here, okay? Team Secret, this Puck and this Phoenix are like smoked to the bot side of the map. They're clearly trying to get some sort of pickoff with this... You know, fire spirit, sunray, egg, sunray combo. Basically, they're trying to kill someone with this over farm puck. This puck is freaking massive, right? So in a game like this, Crystalis has to back off. And I think all of their team make the really quick recognition that this has to be the case. And a lot of players would just simply get this wrong. I don't know exactly how Liquid even got the read that Secret wasn't all together here. But nonetheless, this timely back from Secret keeps them in this game. And you think I'm kidding, right? You think, like, I say that lightly, keeps them in this game. No, I mean it, right? Only Puppy ends up going down here, which is frankly not that bad. Crystalis is able to TP to base and get out with his Aegis. That's obviously pretty important. Get his BKB timing, obviously also very important. And just keep their ability to push intact. And so just keep that in mind, guys. Like, that's one of the number one things. Even though it's not a specific play, you have to be very careful about fighting into number disadvantages. And the main time that's going to happen is when you push towers. If you push towers, the enemy team will be able to TP in and bring four to five heroes. You will most likely not have that amount of heroes, and so be very, very careful. Next up, we're going to see a next level play from Ice 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 and the boys here. This is like, this is literally top tier pro Dota stuff. You're not going to see this from basically any team that isn't upper echelon, uh, at least not frequently or effectively. And what it is, is what we're going to see here from Secret is we're going to see Ice 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 show top. Right? And you might be like, how can I use this stuff in pubs? Well, let's say you have a teammate show top. Very often, a teammate showing top is going to create comfort on the bottom side of the map for the enemy. It's a pretty simple concept. If you're the enemy team and you see your Dragonite top, you're going to assume that the mid to bot side of the map is safer, right? Their primary stun is top, so bottom safe. Right? It's a very simple concept. However, what the advanced concept is, is having the confidence to leave your DK bottom Continue, he continues to shove out top, even using ulti to cast a fireball from farther away. So he's trying to push out top safely while his team is smoking to the bot side of the map, right? And this rap play is a great way to catch heroes lingering. Unfortunately, they get literally the worst kill possible, but as they bumped into him, you can tell that Ice 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 actually TP's bottom, right? So clearly the idea is that they were baiting this DK top or they were trying to make Liquid feel comfortable, but I guess Liquid either read it or they got lucky with, with the Venge running into them. All right, upcoming here, we're gonna see the biggest swing in net worth we see, uh, well, one of the biggest swings in net worth we see from Secret here. And the way they play this fight is incredible. So we're gonna watch this fight from the perspective of Zyax here on the Phoenix, because he plays this fight expertly. So anytime you're trying to fight the enemy, because clearly they're trying to force the issue, even though they're 2k behind, I think they kind of just feel that they just have an advantage. This tiny doesn't have BKB, the snap position four is like not that strong. The Dawnbreaker honestly isn't too strong either. Basically the only issue they really have is troll and they have a halberd completed. So I think they're just feeling confident, especially with this Aegis DD, uh, even though the Aegis is running out, they also have a DD on their TA. So 
they're just feeling confident. They want to take a fight. They feel like it's their timing in the game to get going. And so what, is they, what do they do, right? It's very important to see what Zyax does here uh, to play this fight. So the first thing we actually see is Nisha blink onto the hill and provide vision. So anytime you're gonna try to go up a hill, it's all about the vision game. Now it's a bit psychotic for Nisha to do this. You'll note that they have a sentry. The only time you can make a play like this is if you have a sentry to immediately scout if they have a ward. Because if they did, well, the puck could phase shift, right? They could phase shift and then waning rift out. But, right, they end up jumping on the ogre. It's kind of best case scenario for secret. They don't really care too much about this ogre. Ogre's able to get off his stun, buy enough time, kite out. Right, and it's really, really nice. Puppy doesn't immediately go down. Instead, he's able to kite out. And this is a really nice play from Puppy. Instead of being a dummy, like a lot of people are, and just manning up on the high ground and being like, I'm a support, I'm dead. How come my team isn't killing them? He tries to kite out because positioning is everything. Even a couple of, of, of I don't know, inches, whatever you're going to call it, is all the difference, right? It's, it's all the difference because it allows the TA to hit from such, such a comfortable position, a position where it's difficult for the, the tiny to jump her conveniently. Right. On top of that, the further the cores go, the more vision you're going to have of the backline and the easier it is for the, the backline jumpers to jump the backline. For instance, Puck going hard on the backline here. Uh, but basically, from Zayek's perspective, you can see he also wants to place a ward as soon as he can. Starts with the Sunray, tries to buy time for Puppy, actually goes onto the hill for a beautiful egg, which sets up for the Shard Sunray. Pops it a little bit late there, but is now going to be able to heal up his T8 whenever needed. Hits a big stun onto the troll, can keep the Sunray going, Fire Spirits are out, and it's just a clean fight. Right. He didn't really have to do anything crazy there, but do keep in mind he did place down a hill ward after his egg ended. That's because anytime you fight in the nighttime, your number one priority should be a ward. I even think he should have realistically put down that ward earlier, or I think if they went up the hill with the puck, they should have given puck a ward to place down. So I will I will slightly disagree with the execution from Secret there. I don't think it was necessarily perfect, but either way, very clean fight. And let's move on to the next one. Next up, we're going to talk about how to approach Roche fights and we'll likely end the video here. Basically, the main thing you need to understand about Roche fights that like no one does like, <laughs> like I really mean this, like almost no one does as the puck breaks the smoke. Woof, it's a little bit close. I'm even a little bit surprised he didn't try to jump the Snapfire there force out of BKB. But uh, either way, let's take a look at this Roche fight. So what Secret's doing is they have this really advantageous hill, right? They're holding this hill and they have this Puck 25 who can Dream Cool Pierce uh, magic immunity. So Hard counter to the troll, hard counter to the tiny, hard counter to, you know, all of their BKB heroes. And so they have like, they're very, very strong on the hill. They have a very good hill control team. Why? Because they have a hard stun for whoever walks up. They have like a nice follow-up ability in the Sunray and in the Puck Jump. So they have a very simple execution on holding hills. And in general, vision is the name of the game in the late game. Now, a lot of the time what people do wrong in Roche fights is they don't prioritize holding their vision and looking for the jump. And this is something I've learned to do over, I would say, about the last year that's really improved me as a player. When you're taking Roshan, unless the Rosh is going to instantly die before they can even show up, which is obviously not the case here, you should be more than prepared to fight. In fact, hitting the Rosh should be your last priority. In fact, generally, you should just bait it. Now, Crystalis is hitting it here because he doesn't necessarily know if Team Liquid is going to come, right? Maybe they're going to go bottom and, you know, retain their portion of the map, the bottom side of the map. You know, instead they go for a DD, bit of a psychotic blink in, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that is a little bit crazy, but they do it. Either way, they're ready to fight, right? They're in position to fight for the most part. Phoenix is holding the hill, Puck's holding the hill. I have no idea what Puppy is doing. That's beyond me. I don't know why he's so far away, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Probably not great that he's this far away. Either way, the idea here stands. So now fight breaks out and they're, they're in position, right? Really nice coil on the two. It's just such a great coil on the two. Uh, fight ends up going a little bit weird. The TA does end up getting jumped, but either way, they were prepared. And because they're prepared, they can jump the troll. They force out early BKBs into the fight. And it's very, very hard for Liquid to fight without the BKBs. This is always the downside of Troll Warlord as a hero. When his BKB expires, he's one of the worst carries in Dota. Just gets kited way too easily because his kit doesn't really have... It doesn't have any burst, right? It doesn't have any mobility, no burst, no range. So basically, Troll is like all or nothing, right? For the most part, on his ulti BKB timing. If you don't get people then, often you can do nothing. Not always, but a lot of the time. And so he tries to go in, but we see a buyback from Crystalis. And the main uh, concept we're going to see here now as the fight develops, I'm going to quickly play it back, is a real focus on just kiting out this Troll. Isosize blinks in, tries to stun him, unfortunately doesn't get it off. Beautiful BKB from Matumba Man. Um, but either way, as the fight continues on, Ice 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 is going to get gone on. He's going to look to kite out. He understands what his job is. He needs to just buy time on this troll. Halberds and stuns the troll, gets off the breathe fire, which by the way, 
his 30% breathe fire reduction, putting Troll to 100 damage right now. It's pretty insane. Uh, unfortunately, Troll can um, dispel it with the Satanic. But either way, Troll is currently hitting for 100 damage. Even does pop the Satanic here, partially to heal, but partially to dispel the breathe fire. Uh, that's how much it actually matters. And he does get off kind of a scary ulti. Fortunately, because Secret held his hill, Liquid wasn't able to get down a sentry in, in any of the, the areas you would want to make sure that this TA can't just melt. And yeah, this was very scary. I remember watching this. I'm like, oh my gosh. If this TA gets caught here and she dies back, that could be it. But that's obviously not what happens because they held this area. The supports could never get in here, never get down sentries. They kite back to their hill as well. Uh, on top of that, they have this outpost taken, so the buybacks are just 10 times better on this board as well. You can see how it all comes together. Basically, if you hold the hill, whichever hill it is, if you hold the hill, especially if you're playing Radiant, if you can take this outpost and hold this hill, it allows the Roche fight to be 10 times better because your buybacks are literally flanks, right? If one of your teammates dies, their buyback and TP into the outpost is literally a flank. It's so advantageous as they beautifully win this fight. Team wiping Liquid outside the pit, securing a Roshan. This turns into a lot more than a Roshan as well. I think this actually turns into um, a Rax, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And there we go. That's the, the door uh, broken wide open for Team Secret. All of a sudden... They were like even the whole game, 12k advantage, and it was largely based off of their beautiful teamfight execution and abuse of buybacks. And honestly, that's something even I have a lot of room to grow on. The understanding of buybacks. They just knew they had the buyback advantage for one reason or another. I don't know if Liquid bought back earlier or they just noticed items that insinuated that Liquid didn't have buybacks, but nonetheless, that was the case. That was very clearly the case. And as a result, Secret goes on to win this game as they now have an Aegis as we see a Another little team fight here. But all right, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this more general pro analysis. I know it's not as specific as some of my other videos, but I think it's honestly just more informational and frankly better if you're trying to overall improve in Dota. But all right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.